from Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! The decision to let this pipeline come through America is the most fateful decision you will ever make, Mr. President. It would be like jabbing a dirty needle into this country from Canada. It would be like lighting a fuse on a carbon bomb. Tens of thousands rally in Washington Sunday, calling on President Obama to permanently reject the Keystone XL tar sands pipeline. We'll hear from Obama's former Green czar Van Jones, Canadian Indigenous leader Chief Jackie Thomas, and Bill McKibben of 350.org, then to actor, singer, activist Harry Belafonte. African Americans are the most unemployed, the most caught in the unjust systems of justice. And in the gun game, they are the most hunted. The rivers of blood that wash the streets of our nation flow mostly from the bodies of our black children. Harry Belafonte receives the Spring Orn Medal, the NAACP's highest achievement. He was introduced at Friday's award ceremony by Newark Mayor Cory Booker, the man who could become New Jersey's next senator. Now, one who stands and calls to the conscience of this community that we have problems that are deep, we have challenges that are high. We have to understand that the urgency of our past is still here with us in the present. Mayor Booker spoke just hours after New Jersey Senator Frank Lautenberg announced he would not seek re-election, paving the way for Booker's nomination. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Tens of thousands rallied on Washington's National Mall Sunday for what organizers dubbed the largest climate rally in U.S. history. The Forward on Climate event urged President Obama to reject the Keystone XL oil pipeline and accept binding limits on emissions of carbon. Indigenous leader Chief Jacqueline Thomas and Casey Camp said the Keystone XL pipeline endangers their communities. It puts at risk my neighbors to the east of me that live at the tar sands. The government doesn't recognize these people, and these people have been dying of mysterious cancers. Their water is polluted, their animals are sick, and Mother Earth is sick. And we're here to make a difference. We're here to be in solidarity with all of us who understand that we have a very slim opportunity to make human life continue to exist, and, and that's, that's our choice. Groups opposing coal production, nuclear power and hydraulic fracturing for natural gas participated in the protest, as did a number of interfaith organizations. Several smaller parallel rallies were held in cities across the country. We'll have more on the forward on climate rally after headlines. The Obama administration's confirmed reports it's drafted a backup plan should Congress fail to pass comprehensive immigration reform. According to USA Today, the Obama proposal would allow undocumented immigrants to obtain legal permanent residency status within eight years while continuing massive spending on border militarization. President Obama returned to his hometown of Chicago Friday as part of a post-State of the Union tour. Obama announced the visit in the aftermath of the killing of 15-year-old Hadia Pendleton, a Chicago teen shot dead just days after performing at Obama's second term inauguration. In his remarks, Obama said the rate of shooting deaths for young people in Chicago is equivalent to a Newtown massacre occurring every four months. It was something profound and uniquely uh, heartbreaking and tragic, obviously, about a group of six-year-olds being killed. But last year, there were 443 murders with a firearm on the streets of this city. And 65 of those victims were 18 and under. So that's the equivalent of a new town every four months. And that's precisely why the overwhelming majority of Americans are asking for some common-sense proposals to make it harder for criminals to get 
their hands on a gun. Four separate shootings were reported in Chicago in the 90 minutes after Obama's speech. Just hours later, the sister of a teenager who'd sat behind Obama on stage as he appealed for gun control was shot dead. The victim, Janae McFarlane, was 18 years old. She was the mother of a three-month-old boy. Sectarian discord is growing in Pakistan in the aftermath of a massive bombing. At least 85 people were killed in the city of Quetta on Saturday in an attack carried out by the extremist Sunni group Lashkari Jangvi. Pakistani Shia groups have threatened to march on the capital Islamabad unless the Pakistani government deploys the military to Quetta and other Shiite areas. Afghan President Hamid Karzai has ordered Afghan forces to stop requesting airstrikes from the U.S.-led NATO occupation force on residential areas. Karzai unveiled the ban just days after a U.S. airstrike killed 10 civilians, including four children, in Kunar province. In the district of Kunar, foreigners in our Afghan National Directorate of Security Forces carried out an operation and bombarded a village. They killed 14 people, including women, men, and children. Tomorrow, I will issue a decree stating that under no conditions can Afghan forces request foreign airstrikes on Afghan homes or Afghan villages during operations. Iraq continues to face a wave of sectarian violence. On Sunday, at least 37 people were killed and more than 100 wounded in a series of car bombings in Baghdad. The blast targeted mostly Shia areas. More than 100 people have been killed in Iraq this month, after close to 200 died in January. And protests continued in Bahrain over the weekend, after activists marked the second anniversary of their uprising against the U.S.-backed monarchy. On Saturday, police fired tear gas at stone-throwing youths following the funeral for a 16-year-old demonstrator reportedly shot by authorities at close range. On Sunday, the Bahraini regime claimed it had arrested eight people belonging to a militant cell with ties to Iran, Iraq and Lebanon. Protests erupted across the occupied West Bank Friday in support of hunger-striking Palestinians in Israeli prisons. Dozens of protesters were treated for tear gas inhalation and injuries from rubber-coated bullets fired by Israeli troops. The prisoners include Samer Sawi, who was initially released under the 2011 deal that freed Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit, only to be rearrested and returned to an Israeli prison last year. His family says he's been on hunger strike for more than 200 days, drinking only water. Water. Ecuadorian President Rafael Correa has easily won re-election to a third term in office. Correa took Sunday's election with 57 percent of the vote, more than doubling the tally of his challenger. In his victory speech, Correa said his re-election marks a new step in Latin America's growing independence from foreign control. The banking class cannot run things here anymore, nor party politics, nor the media, nor factions serving interest groups. The International Monetary Fund does not run things here, nor the international bureaucracies. Hegemonic countries do not run things here anymore. Despite whatever errors we could commit, you can rest assured that this revolution will be led by you, Ecuadorian men and women. Correa's international notoriety has increased in the past year after he granted political asylum to WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez has returned to Venezuela after a two-month stay in Cuba to receive cancer treatment. Chavez was forced to delay his inauguration last month in order to continue his recovery. In a Twitter message earlier today, Chavez said he will continue his treatment back at home. Thousands of people marched in the Maldives Friday and supported the ousted former President Mohammad Nasheed. Nasheed took refuge in the Indian embassy last week to evade arrest on a warrant. He's facing charges of illegally ordering the arrest of a judge appointed by Mahmoud Abdul Gayoom, who ruled the Maldives for 30 years before Nasheed became its first democratically elected president in 2008. Nasheed was ousted last year in what he's described as a coup at gunpoint by Gayoom's supporters. Nasheed is well known internationally for his activism around the issue of global warming, which he says threatens the survival of his small island country. You can go to our website at democracynow.org to see our full interview with President Nasheed when he came to the United States. Officials in Washington state have confirmed a radioactive leak at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation, the nation's most polluted nuclear weapons production site. A single tank is losing up to 300 gallons of radioactive waste, sparking concerns about the facility's other tanks. Hanford currently houses more than 53 million gallons of radioactive waste. 
Former Democratic Congress member Jesse Jackson, Jr. has agreed to plead guilty to spending more than $750,000 in campaign funds on personal items. A federal indictment shows Jackson steered donations towards purchases, including music memorabilia and items for his home. Jackson resigned last year after a several-month leave to seek treatment for bipolar disorder. In a statement, Jackson said, quote, "'While my journey is not yet complete, it's my hope I'm remembered for the things that I did right,' unquote. He faces up to five years in jail and fines of $250,000. Democratic Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey is reportedly being investigated for allegedly having sex with prostitutes while staying at the home of a top donor in the Dominican Republic. Menendez has denied the allegations, and no evidence has emerged to back them up. He's already facing a Senate Ethics Committee probe over his ties to the donor in question. New York City bus drivers have ended a month-long strike after failing to win concessions from Mayor Michael Bloomberg. More than 8,000 school bus drivers and matrons have been off the job since mid-January, seeking guarantees over job security and the outsourcing of their contracts. New York City has put its deals with the private bus companies that hire the drivers up for bidding, a move the drivers say could threaten their jobs at the end of the school year. The bus drivers' union says they've given up trying to secure a deal with Bloomberg and will try again with his eventual successor. <clears throat> and those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.